What's going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And uh, we've got, what are we doing? Basically a lightning round day. Yeah, I week. have just, it, it's been like, there's been a lot of stuff in tech news, but not like a bunch of big stories. So I just basically wrote down, I think I have like five or six interesting titles we're going to blurt them out. We're just going to talk about them really quick. Your thoughts. And that's going to be the episode pretty much. And um, as we promised, we are doing wait for trivia to the end. We are not going to do it at the ad break because we are kind of going to do the season one trivia wrap up this week. That's um, what I hear. I'm a lot of points behind. So we're going to try and see if I can claw my way back into the. Uh... I heard we're going to have some sort of a, a mathematical way of it being exciting. Maybe you can catch up. I have not heard that, so... It might be a thing. I need to start paying attention in the studio. We'll see. I got ears everywhere. Cool. Um, I I am going to... Before we get into that, Studio Channel. We made a new series we're calling Match Cut, which is just kind of like competition-style videos at the studio. Yeah. And we did one with a contest of Vin, David, and Brandon having to create the best top-down shot kind of chop style. I, I loved it. I They're all competing it was- against each other. It's funny because they take like real effort to like win. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like we'll have like little lulls in the year where there's not too much tech coming out and then boom, we'll we'll go office Olympics on it and just make yeah, a new yeah. competition out of it. So this is a fun one. It was a pretty classic who can make the best top down. Yeah. And I'll Good just start. leave it at that. Just go watch it. It's a fun video. And if you have suggestions for other other versions of match cut. Leave your leave your comments. There's on the already some really good suggestions Perfect. that I'm pumped for. Perfect. Okay, let me. So, do you want me? I'll just read out headlines. Yeah, you and just then pick you one, riff off it. Okay, pick one and we'll do it. Cool. Let's um just start really quick with the we got the some of the specs for the Nothing Phone and I saw this. Still haven't seen a price, but they're taking pre-orders, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. So we now know that it's a Snapdragon 778G. Mm-hmm. And that's the chip that's inside. So again, we were I guess we were kind of talking about this a little bit last week yes. where it was like how is this phone going to differentiate itself against all the other phones? It's a it's a startup company mm-hmm. and I think we saw these lights and the transparent design and it was pretty clear that that's going to be how it differentiates itself rather than the previous Carl Pay playbook which is yeah. we're going to appeal to enthusiasts and give it the full-on, like, best specs for the money treatment. Yeah. This is definitely not that. The 7 Series chip is fine, but it's not going to be, like, one of those, like, wow, I want this phone because of the specs. Yeah, you're not maxing out this phone. Um, Like you said, like, the old one was kind of like, you were the sleeper phone. You had all the specs, you had all the power from it, and then you were making a couple sacrifices on the rest of it. It reminds me of that meme where, I think it's usually used about NFTs, but it's like a guy in the corner of a party, like, Nobody here knows that I have oh. 18 gigs of RAM on my phone, but I do. It's one of those things. I could see the that. OnePlus phones. But uh, with the Nothing phone, it'll just be right in your face. It'll flash. Mm-hmm. It'll flash right in your face. Yeah, it'll see. Everybody knows that I have the phone that Everyone lights up on the back. Yeah, um, yeah I think w- I kind of, and I think w- knowing this solidified my my thought process on it a little more, which was this feels like it's kind of going similar to their headphones. I call it like the Beats route, which is like, I am a very fun, interesting to look at phone. My design is really cool. Like holding this phone is cool. And I'm going to now, it looks like the sacrifices are going to be made on the performance side, which is still good performance. But like beats aren't going to compare to like the Sony in terms of sound quality, but they're going to like look cooler than the Sony. So I was going to ask, are you saying, are you going with like 2000? Nine beats or like 2019 beats? <laughs> Am I that behind on beats? They're- 2009 beats were like, they're going to be more expensive and they're going to be flashy and they're going to spend money on ads, but they're going to sound legitimately crazy if you actually want like good quality. Like they they just have huge bass. They mm-hmm. don't sound good. Where like in 2019, they sound fine, but they're clearly not the focus still. I, uh, that. Newer, yeah. newer age. Like this is going to be a fine phone, fine. and the majority of people who use it are going to be happy with it. But like, the the focus is the design. It's the hard focus to make is a bad phone. Cool. At yeah, this point. exactly. It's pretty hard. Okay, yeah. So we know about it. I think they had something like two hundred thousand people. Yeah, pre order yeah. this phone, and they all paid twenty five dollars non refundable to mm-hmm. get in line. Non-refundable to me is interesting. I do I not know. know how I feel about that. I don't know how they landed on $25, but 
non-refundable, I'm not a big fan of, but it's only it's only 25. This is the thing. If they're like non-refundable $50, I'd be like, that's a lot. That's too much money. If they said non-refundable $5, I'd be like, that's no money. Why would you even say non-refundable? Just make it refundable. People just get in line for five bucks. But non-refundable $25 feels like fundraising. <laughs> it's it does. just right in that gray I don't, area. I don't like it. And it's like, I, I do agree with you. $25 doesn't seem that bad, but like, let's compare it to pre-ordering like Cybertruck was $100, right? $100 refundable. But $100 compared to the, let's assume, 50000 plus price tag on it. So it's a you're very small margin. The ratio between the pre-order. I feel like if you make the comparison, the ratio has to be mentioned there. Right, okay. And like $100 so, for a car is not that bad of a, and it's refundable. Yeah. So if we just guesstimate the price of the phone, that would be kind of like the equivalent of paying like several thousand dollars to pre-order a Cybertruck. And it's non-refundable, so... And you don't know the specs of the Cybertruck and you don't know the final price of the Cybertruck and the credit will go there if you buy it, mm -hmm. but you'll have to wait in line for it and you won't know what it is. So you better hope it's That's a really similar. good point. I don't know. It's a it's a very interesting and unfortunately not very surprising um, way they're handling it. So yeah. I can't, but 200,000 pre-orders, that's like 5 million. It's a lot of people. There you go. Okay. Great start for nothing, I guess. Yeah. Um, let's go into why we're on the topic of phone. Let's just check out the Xiaomi Mi 12 S Ultra. Oh, this one. We I got are it right here. Dubbing this the Minion phone. This I is, think. uh, yeah. Okay. So video viewers, I'm holding it. Audio listeners, just picture a phone where you, you've seen like the iPhone has like a triple camera array at the top with the pros and it's up in the corner. And then you've seen like some that have an even bigger, like triple camera array. Imagine just one gigantic like cyclops eye in the middle of the top of the phone that's what this is it kind of looks like a minion if you squint and it, if it was wearing overalls a matte black everything minion. a matte black well it's like a it's like a leather red uh -huh. a fake leather back but this is the phone mm -hmm. i i've had a lot of you know what i have a hot take about this phone okay i'm still testing it and we're still working on what will turn into our video about it okay but overall Solid phone, right? Very high end specs. This is the Ultra from Xiaomi. So you remember the the Xiaomi? I think it was the 11 Ultra last year, which had the screen on the back and yes. the whole crazy mm -hmm. back of the phone thing. So this is their high end phone. 6.7 inch, 120 hertz LTPO OLED, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, high end chip, IP68 water resistance, 4,860 milliamp hour battery, chargers at 67 watts, wireless chargers at 50. Reverse wireless chargers at 10 watts. It's got all the features. Um, but the cameras are the main, like the clear thing. And from the two and a half days that I've used it, this this smartphone, this is the hot take, is capable of the best smartphone photos of any camera, any smartphone. That's not where I thought you were going, and I'm here for it. It's just a couple of things I've noticed, and I'll show you some of these two as I'm talking okay. about I, them. I mean, can we talk about the tweet that you posted, actually, where oh, you sure. um, were, you know, we're giving it away here, but you tweeted uh, two photos. It's kind of like under a bridge on a field at nighttime with a big stadium light on. Um, one is from the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and one you just posted a mystery contender. Well, spoiler alert, it is the Minion phone. Yep. And uh, a lot of people are guessing a lot of different things things in here uh to be honest i like the 12s photo better it is the one on the right it is a little bit brighter a little bit sorry a little more vibrant and saturated but it definitely it handles is. the exposure way better and has way less noise and way better highlight protection yeah it, well yeah the lights is where is the clear difference here like one is just a ball of light and the other is like you can actually see all the individual lights yeah it is more vibrant i would like to see this is a fairly dull landscape in terms of colors so while push. it's vibrant of that yeah. they're all dull already so that just makes it look nice i think warm and and the graffiti looks really nice and all the the stone looks nice um, but couple, i'm a fan of it there's a i'm going to show you some pictures but generally here's why i'm such a big fan of this camera and like a phone that looks like this it better have a good camera right you pull this out at a party or something yeah and like you this is this is for the camera uh Dynamic range and fine detail. Okay. Those are the two things that this phone does really, really well. Sometimes it overdoes the HDR, but in general, dynamic range and fine detail. The like a color thing, 
you know, it's okay. I'm not always a fan of like a color, but they do have the ability to toggle between like a natural color and like a, a vivid color or something like that. Okay. I've left, I've kind of gone back and forth, but I've taken more with vivid than natural. Really? But, but really here it actually, I'm going to add a third thing. Okay. Now that I'm rambling. So it's dynamic range. It is fine detail and it is shutter speed. Okay. All those things combined. So I take pictures of fast moving objects and they freeze. Look at this photo I just took with the 5X lens. That is really good. It's shooting with sunlight behind the subject. That it's is a really nice photo. Really good fine detail and dynamic range. And I don't even think twice about if the subject's moving or not. It's going to freeze it no matter what, which is awesome if you're taking pictures of like moving dogs we took a lot of pictures like of a dog your kids your kids or at the zoo probably yeah. the number one thing people take pictures on with smartphones so it does great with that and then you take photos like directly into the sun just just overall i'm i'm very impressed with a lot of these pictures you remember zuri sprinting around earlier the dog was just mm-hmm. a blur before didn't ever stop moving but lots That's of pictures awesome. with the shallow depth of field of just the dog seemingly frozen in, in place. Here's one I took last night. Feel free to zoom in on the depth of field on the cleats versus the ground behind it. That does yeah, not that look looks, like a smartphone photo. This looks fantastic. And not yeah. just that, but there's also like reflections in the water that's on the ground and, and it handles all the highlights, really nice no noise. in the back. Yeah, and like your cleats have a lot of detail on them, which it's nailing. You can see like the dirt and all the different and the laces and the fly knit and I take a picture like that on pretty much every phone I test because I probably have practiced that week of whatever week I'm testing a phone. Man, and the and gravel I, too. Yeah, I was just very impressed. The with that. gravel is a great so like for audio listeners, this is a picture of Marquez sitting down on the ground with his feet in front of him and then just kind of the field. He's on asphalt, then there's grass, then there's people in the grass, and there's a skyline in the background. But on the asphalt, you can see the just roll off of the focus roll off. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, yeah, and it, it rolls really, off into really like good. the puddle. It's yeah. so good. So listen, I I still have some more testing to do. I'm working on the video. There are some quirks and weird things about it that I still don't like. Like it is a huge sensor, and it still fringes when you get really close to subjects. Mm-hmm. It still loves to try to switch to the ultra wide macro when you get even closer to a subject. I'm going to show you one more picture that I okay. took on the roof. I can tell you real quick while you're pulling this up one thing I very much dislike about it. And mm. the fake leather back is terrible. Yeah. Don't do this on a smartphone. I feel like the fake leather back is what a lot of cheaper phones do to try and feel more premium. And this makes it feel like a cheaper phone, even though this is a... It's not I'm, a good fake leather. It's not a good fake there leather. There are some good fake leathers. I have yet to feel that. There are some bad That I can leathers. remember. Yeah. This is bad. Don't um, like it at all. You know the roof of this building? Yeah. Super windy. And you know those plants up on the roof that just like wave mm-hmm. back and forth in the wind? Frozen Ooh. in time. Shallow I depth of field. Okay. Just straight, like, captured it, didn't even think twice. The thing was blowing back and forth in and out of was the it frame. Was really? And this it is... happened to get in the middle of the frame and nailed that shot. Dynamic That's... range is on point, no noise. Like, it is. it has the highest ceiling of any smartphone camera I've ever used. I think sure. that's that's my hot take. All right. Early contender for some awards in the future. It's really good. I'm gonna, it's going to be hard to beat that from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, you heard, it, uh, you heard the minion name here first. I think we're going to try to do a minion thumbnail for this. Review. Of course, obviously. And I also heard you're wearing overalls for the review. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm you heard it yellow, here first. Yellow. Heard costume. it here first. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it's a high end phone. Yeah. Well, I think everything else will go over in the video, which you should see pretty shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully next week, maybe. No pressure. I'll try to have it out by the Oh, episode. let's put the pressure on. Yeah. Everyone tweet at him nonstop. Yeah, that's what it. he loves. That's that's the best way to get videos fast is to just constantly berate your favorite content creator with <laughs> the thing that you want that they might not be working on, but I promise you it works perfectly. Maybe. All right. Ad, oh, we'll go to an ad break so you can type your tweet up right now. Be right back. All right. Be right back. This episode of Waveform is sponsored by Gigabyte Technology. 
Gigabyte Aero laptops are a great balance of power and mobility for creators, designers, or anyone on the go. The Aero 16 features a 4K OLED for crisp visuals and high contrast colors, great display. The display has also been certified by X-Rite and Pantone for accurate color calibration, which is nice. That comes in handy for things like video and photo editing for creators. Um, and it's powered by an Intel Core i9 processor an NVIDIA RTX 30 series graphics card, plus it's got the thin bezels uh, along with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio to maximize real estate so there's no wasted space. The webcam is even housed in a little, you're pointing at it, the little tab above the screen so you don't have to deal with a notch or thicker bezels eating into your screen space. Pretty cool idea if you ask me. The Aero 16 is designed for creators, whatever you wanna do, whether it's audio editing, animation, or even just gaming. The Aero 16 can handle it all in a sleek, portable case. One thing I really appreciate about the Aero for creators is for people like me, inside the box, you get a dongle that comes in this little carrying case right here to turn one of your USB-C ports into a hub that includes ethernet, USB-A, mini display port, and full-size HDMI. Again, that's inside the box. That's not a paid extra. I see you, Gigabyte. Good looks. So elevate your vision with Gigabyte Aero laptop. Go to gigabyte.com to see the Aero 16 today. That's G-I-G-A-B-Y-T-E.com. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about a couple more headlines. We got another one coming up. You pick this one. This from is my the favorite. Verge. My favorite of uh, the whole episode. I'm just gonna read the headline, then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. The headline is: GM is reportedly only making about 12 Hummer EVs per day. Okay. Um, interesting. <laughs> That's <laughs> interesting rough. Number. That's rough, man. Okay. So in the beginning, so we've heard. Uh, Whenever we talk about manufacturing, you have to like ramp up manufacturing, right? So yeah. you start at a low number and then you ramp up to high. So they're not going to be making 12 a day forever. No. They're going to start at six a day, then 12 a day, then 50 a day, then 100, then 300. Um, so at this point right now, they're at 12 a day. It might take a while if they only do 12 a day for a while. Uh, do you want me to like give the reason for it first? Or do you want oh, to yeah. dunk, dunk on them a no, little longer? No, is there longer? a reason? Do we know? Yeah, pretty much it's that right now they have to rely on all their batteries from LG while their battery plants are being built, which are should be coming up pretty soon. And obviously they should be producing far okay. more. But like if we want to just pretend, like let's just stick on the 12 number. For comparison, um, Rivian's making about 30 to 40 a day. EVs a day. So I'm assuming that's just R1T though, because R1S Mostly I R1T. don't think is in production yet. We were just trying to figure that out this morning because we're seeing videos of it start reviews to pop up. Reviews of the R1T of the R1S just went live, which leads me to believe you you are going to start seeing them on the road. I do think so, but yeah. I think it's still mostly R1T by volume. Okay. Um, and the Ford, I don't know if they're just like memeing here, but they are making 150 F150 Lightnings a day, which I mean I think we all kind of saw Ford doing that because. The F-150 is pretty much an already built truck where the Hummer EV is the Hummer EV, the gargantuan whatever that it's they massive. is not already a body on something. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but I just like found some other. Oh, also, if they were to continue shipping at 12 a day, it would take 17 and a half years to deliver to everybody on the wait list. Yeah, they, they got to ramp it up. That's that's, Fantastic. By the way, 150 F-150 Lightnings doesn't sound like that much either. It doesn't sound like that much, but they also just started delivering like a month ago, right? Right. So they're going to ramp up. They'll probably I, aim for I would 300 so. a day, then 1,000 a I day. I believe. So uh, we talked about it a few weeks ago, but I think batteries are also a limiting factor there. Um, and they're opening a new plant in Georgia, Okay, I believe. I think batteries are going to be the thing that's going to... Uh, limit pretty much everybody for a while. Uh, yeah. but Cars are hard to make. Right exactly. Um, but in this article, there's just a, a couple. One other fun fact that I found mm -hmm. about the Hummer EV, which I think has been out for a long time, but I don't know how I missed it. But the Hummer EV battery, just the battery, weighs as much as a Honda Civic. Just the battery weighs as much as a Honda <laughs> Civic. How big is the, doesn't the Hummer EV have like a, uh, I guess it is massive, but isn't it like a 180 kilowatt hour battery or something I, crazy? I, funny enough, when I was looking, I didn't see the exact spec. I do know it's 2,923 pounds wow, for just, just the battery. the battery. The, is, that's more, that's heavier than some entire sports cars. Like the lightest sports cars are about 2,900 to 3,000 pounds. That's awesome. The whole so the whole Hummer EV is nine thousand pounds, 
Um, for reference, the F-150 Lightning's 6,500 pounds. Oh, so awesome. if you took the battery out of the Hummer EV, it would, almost, it would weigh a little bit less than an F-150 Lightning. The Hummer is basically a small tank again. That thing is... This is Nine, going to be on the roads with people. 9,000 pounds. I guess, okay, on one hand, what's the difference between a 6,000-pound truck hurling at you and a 9,000-pound truck hurling at you? But on the other hand... <laughs> Brakes, like, like that's a lot of mass to be thrown around. Wow, and that thing accelerates too, like a normal EV. It, it accelerates it's fast, pretty quickly. Nine thousand pounds. Oh my god. Yeah. So uh, Hummer EV, I'll be okay if it stays at twelve a day because I do. If I'm being honest, I'm scared to be on the road with them. I've said that many times. What else weighs nine thousand pounds? That's a good question. Can you think of something off your head, and I'll check fact check Things, it. Uh, okay. Something that weighs 9,000 pounds, a bison, fully grown bison. Seems like it might be more, actually. I think it's less. Really? Oh, no. A male adult, 1,000 to 2,200 pounds. Damn, bison. Bison's only 1,000 pounds? A small one. Oh. They can get up to 2,200 pounds. Adult yak. I should Google adult yak weight. (laughs) Only 1,200 pounds. All right. I was pretty off. It's about eight yaks. It's eight yaks. (laughs) In case you're wondering. Yeah, no, I'm I'm expecting to see all of these slowly ramp up. I think they're all going to have low volume numbers as as you mentioned, it's hard to make cars right now. Not only just the batteries, but like the computers, the chips inside, the parts, the pieces, the materials. So, yeah. These are the companies that we expect to be good at ramping up scale. Mm-hmm. Ford, GM, they know how to make cars quickly. Yeah. Rivian, Tesla, the startups, we have to see what they end up doing cuz they have to prove that. I guess Tesla's proven Tesla's, it. But. Tesla's proven it. Rivian has a lot to prove. Yeah. And then, like, I guess on the other hand, like we've said before, is, like, Ford GM has to prove the... Right now, the battery ramp-up is where they have to prove it because, yeah. like, their production factories know what they're doing. Yeah. Their assembly lines know what they're doing. The Gigafactory was a real good idea. Remember when it was in a tent? Yes. I, that's that when we still visited. blows my mind. That's when we shot that interview with Elon is we did the Model 3 and Model Y... Or, sorry, they were doing... Model S and Model X in the factory, and they were cranking out three and Y from a tent and next a door. Tent. That was a. I like go outside today and then imagine people working in a tent doing that. Those, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a lot of robots, but like some air conditioning. It's maybe. hot. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, next thing on our list, I have Tesla scans for potholes and can adjust vehicle suspension to avoid damage. So this is a potential update coming up. And I'm going to read one of the notes really quickly because I'm having a hard time figuring out what it does. Even though that sounds like really obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Scans for potholes, adjust suspension to avoid damage. Um, So release notes, the update will be, uh, why does it just say 2022? It's a new software version. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, And it says we'll be able to, Scan ahead for potholes and adjust the suspension according to rough roads. Um, but it does also say this adjustment may occur at various locations subject to availability as the vehicle downloads rough roadmap data generated by Tesla cars. So I can't tell if this is scanning and when it sees a pothole adjusts or if it is always scanning, sending data back to Tesla, calling a road or like putting a road as a rough road in Tesla's data. So now when any Tesla goes over it, the suspension just changes. The second one. Okay. So right now, the air suspension in a Model S and Model X, they can adjust in real time, but it's it's like a one or two second thing as okay. it's happening. So if you come up on a pothole at highway speed, it's not like you can just it, it see can, it and adjust. <laughs> That's not okay. happening. But as of right now, there are a couple things that the cars already do. I remember a couple of years ago saying this in a video and it really blew people's minds where if I have a steep driveway and I pull up to my driveway and I go, you know what, I'd like to raise the suspension to not like scrape. I raise the suspension, pull in the driveway. Every time the car gets back to that GPS location, it goes, ah, last time you were here, you raised Mm -hmm. the suspension and it does it again automatically. And so it starts doing that. And there are parts of the highway that I notice where I'm driving where I don't even ask it to, but I see a little message saying, raising the suspension for comfort. Hmm. And it's a rougher section of the road. So I believe it's already doing a rough something like this where cars are driving around all the time and they're collecting tons of suspension data. And you can see that live data. Like you go over a bunch of potholes in a row, like you can see it on the on the diagram in the car. 
And so, yeah, it will decide to raise and lower the suspension when that happens. So I suspect for all of the cars in the fleet, now there's data all over the world okay. for rough roads. I don't know if it's visually scanning for actual potholes. Like, that. I, th- I think it is scanning for potholes and sending that data back. And then in the future, when that road becomes, right. that is when it'll adjust the suspension. Yeah. So it, it I like the is- phrase... Ah, the phrase scanning for potholes implies visual, but it could easily be scanning for potholes with the suspension data. It could be doing it a bunch of different ways. When I read that headline, though, I imagine like, you know, like laser beams going across the road and being like, that's what they want you to do. A pothole. Like, fix yourself really quick. Um, It does say that there was some rumor that there may be an. 3D mapping with obstacle avoidance in the future, which would be more rather than change the suspension, but get you away from a pothole if you miss it. Okay. Those ones sneak up on you. Um, I think overall, this is cool. Maybe not as cool as the headline makes it sound, but also if at any point that suspension change can help you not get a flat tire or something like once, I think it's super worth Worth it. it. Carney's the worst. If Tesla wants to full blown test this, if you want to test it, they should drive it around. We got a road. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. Actually, you might be doing a ton of data uh, back to the. I've sent plenty of information to the fleet. Exactly. For sure. Um, This is the kind of cool stuff that, like, this is why Tesla is going to be so far ahead because the amount of things they have scanning right now and the information they're gaining is going to be more than everyone else. Yeah. Information systems. Yeah. Information wars. It's Do you real. think they'll ever license it and sell it? No. No. I think that would be the smart move. I don't think they're even able, well, in a in a privacy-focused world, they can't even see the data. It's just the cars working with the data. True. So That's what they want you to think. They want you to <laughs> believe that anyway. Okay. Uh, next headline. Last one. Um, and this is pretty small, but um, BMW is the latest to adopt Android Automotive. Um, BMW, the company, basically is saying that in March 2023, some of their new infotainment systems are going to be Android automotive based. And just to reiterate here, because this is something I just learned very recently, Mm -hmm. the difference between Android auto and Android automotive is Android automotive is in your car, in your car's infotainment system and your car is running. It is the car's. It is the car's. It doesn't have anything to do with your phone. Yeah. Obviously it can connect to your phone and everything, but like you, it's not running off of your phone like Android auto is. I think this is awesome. Yeah. Google needs to amazing. work on their naming to make that a little more clear. So True. we know the difference between Android Auto and Android Auto Motive. But yes, and that also is funny because didn't we just see that the Polestar, which runs on Android Automotive, mm-hmm. just added CarPlay support? I think that's awesome because that means you're not going to get stuck in it in the future. That's true. So people aren't going to not buy a car because it has it. That's true. I get so focused on the companies that I'm like, why would they ever enable that? But also I'm like, yeah, sweet. I would love to have that. Uh, Android automotive, Android anything is going to be better than pretty much any automotive infotainment system. They're all terrible. We've said that a million times. There's, I don't like making blanket statements, but I feel very comfortable saying every in-car's built-in infotainment system is bad, period, across the board, all of them, 100%. So yeah, I don't mind supporting Android Automotive and Android Auto and CarPlay. And CarPlay, yeah, all good, all good stuff. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll come back, we're out of our headlines, but we're into our trivia. See you in a second. All right, welcome back to the final section of this week's podcast, Mm -hmm. where I have no notes. All it says is trivia finale showdown. Yeah, I think we talked last week about I was so far behind in points. Let's like maybe wrap it up. We're going to keep doing trivia. I have to say thank you, everyone, for giving us feedback on trivia. It's something Adam thought of a few months ago, um, and we wanted to try it, and everyone loved it. So now it's like part of the show. It's fun. We love it. I like it. So we're kind of doing like... Imagine this as like the season one finale and then next episode season two will start. So we're keeping, we're still doing it. Okay. But I know nothing else about what's happening it's from now on. It's final Jeopardy of season one? I don't know. It, Maybe. It's like a final Jeopardy where it's own TV show and that would be an awesome TV show. Why have they never done only final Jeopardy this show? <laughs> well, because you have to get the first part of the Jeopardy to build up the points so that people can... I don't like your double logic. Double Jeopardy. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> okay. Ellis and Adam, what's going on? 
Whoa. Welcome to <laughs> Trivia Final Showdown, the Waveform episode. So this is how this is going to go. We're going to have a few questions and rounds and things like that. I'm going to ask a couple questions about tech, phones, cars, companies in general, whatever. I love this <laughs> so much. Crack, is cracking up. Um, so we're going to take the suggestion of a lovely commenter last week, Ramazan Samat, I think his name is. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but thank you so much because he had the idea to let Andrew answer first a couple questions okay. so that <laughs> there's a hope that you can catch up. So it'd be a little... I also think this is like what he suggested was every week when we do trivia is the person who's behind should get the first chance to answer the question. Yeah. And then if they get it wrong, then the next person can steal. So if you're ahead and the person so behind if, answers first and gets it wrong, then you can Then answer. you can get it and get the question Okay, right. otherwise exactly. I can't answer. I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an interesting thing. We're, I guess we're doing it today, but also just like going forward in general. I like it. So yeah. it'll make it hurt so much more when I get all of these wrong. So. <laughs> okay. We'll see. I'm going to close my laptop so no one yeah. thinks I'm cheating. Although yeah. when I get them all wrong, no one will think I'm cheating anyways. So, Okay, so first question. Kudos on that music, by the way. That was Just all interrupting else. very quickly. That was that, that? I felt like I was no. in a game show there for a second. That, yeah, that was a good choice. That was yeah, it was great. great. He played that for me earlier and I was cracking <laughs> up. I was like, absolutely. Um, okay. Sims. Andrew. Oh, well, let's say what the score is. First, the score is 14 Marquez. Andrew. Eight. Woof. <laughs> Let's go. First question to Andrew. What year did the Nexus Q come out? I hope the next question is not what is the Nexus Q <laughs> because I also don't know what that is. Um, but I will take a guess. 2011. Correct. 2011. Let's go. Can I know what the thought process was for that guess? <laughs> Android. I don't know when Android came out sometime when I was in college. So, no, a little before college. No, no, in college. Yeah, I just guessed the year in college. <laughs> I don't even remember when I went to college at this point. Great. Do you know what the Nexus Q was? No. Do you... I know what it looks why like. Why a tablet is what I'm guessing for some reason. So it reason. came out at the same time as a Nexus tablet. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was an orb-shaped media player that was discontinued immediately. I need to see a picture of this. <laughs> the reviews right destroyed now. it. Immediately. I need this. It this was, sounds awesome. Was it like literally like a month? I think I at one point did a list of the fastest discontinued tech products of all time and it was like top five. Yeah. Was it faster than the Celeron Pixel Slate? Probably, I think it was. Okay. I think so. Yeah, I think it was because Celeron awesome. Pixel Slate hit the shelves, and then real people bought it, and then the reviews I want, hit. Sorry, I, I need to look this. Nexus Q, really. yeah, look up. Wait, Nexus Q is a, kind of one of the quirkiest pieces. I also thought it was 2012, so I'm, I'm glad it you got that. Kind right. of looks like a Amazon Echo now that I'm looking at it. It does a lot, like a smooth version of the. Yeah, they were first. Oh. What? Wait, this is so much worse than I thought it was. <laughs> what does it do? It's just a ball with you plug it into your TV, in and it was just it, it was like oh, a Chromecast, no. but worse. It didn't do anything. It was like Google this Play is, Movies. Samsung needs it to buy Google the leftover stock of this and turn this into uh, the Bixby speaker. This was okay. So you plug this into your TV, and it would stream. Google services for you instead of the TV streaming it. So you don't have a smart TV. You okay. plug it in. Now you have Google Play. Oh, movies. that makes way more sense. Yeah, but it's just Google Play movies. Okay. So it was like the it all it did Chromecast get developed from this pretty much? Uh it came shortly uh, after. Cro yeah. Supposedly the, the Chromecast was developed by a different team. The Q walked so Chromecast could run. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love I love that. I want one of these so bad I think right you can now. probably pick one up on eBay for about 30 cents. We need to get one. <laughs> we cheap. need to get that one okay but good job way to get that one you got it yeah. nice okay next question and andrew's still down so he'll get first dibs all yep. right physical challenge yeah um do 28 jumping jacks no uh, um <laughs> marcus <laughs> what does the s in https stand for that one i know system 
That one I know. Nope. I'm trying to Mark remember what all of these chance HTTPS to steal. stands for. It's funny because uh, when I first made mkbhd.com, I made it through Squarespace, and I got the most complaints I ever got for as garbage as that oh, website was. Oh, I remember those complaints. All the complaints were like, why isn't it secure? Why isn't it HTTPS? Marquez, oh, you could have made no. a secure website. So I know that the S stands for secure. Uh, I'm yep. trying to remember. So hypertext transfer protocol secure. Oh, that I do not know. I think that's what HTTPS stands uh, for. Ellis is giving me the thumbs up. So yes, yeah, correct. Sure. Yeah. Let's go with that. I'm mad I didn't know that because of your you reasoning. Remember these I, yes, I yeah, do. See? I it, it, they were so bad they were taking me in it. Like I, yes, yeah, I it, remember. It is that secure now. MKBHD.com. You can go check. It is secure now with a capital S. So is lower at MKBHD.com. All right. Next question. This one's hard. Oh, this is Andrew. So this Andrew's is just embarrass Andrew. <laughs> Seagate's first hard drive, the ST506, was released in 1980. How much storage did it come with? Can you say the name again? Seagate's first hard drive, the ST506. Whoever gets the closest without going over will get, will get the point. Without going over? Yeah. 86? It was released in 1980. How much storage did it come with? Eighty. Like that's gonna be so low that I don't think I'm even gonna get the unit, the unit. correct. <laughs> like, like okay, so <laughs> the, megabyte. No. The no. first storage piece of anything I ever bought was a thumb drive in high school. That was one gigabyte, and it was eighty dollars. I'll always remember that because what you can buy for eighty dollars right now is wow. insane. Like probably over a terabyte. You can grab a terabyte for sixty bucks. Yeah. So like, if that was in two thousand. 2005 like Minus 1980 years. we're talking kilobytes uh i'm gonna guess 500 kilobytes i was gonna go way lower i i, I don't know how to get much lower <laughs> so than that I, I my only context and it's kind of the same with a lot of thinking as you is i remember having a windows 95 computer mm -hmm. that had it's RAM measured in kilobytes i think it was 128 kilobytes of ram okay but again that's 1995 like well, it has to keep going. That's so, also flash storage and not a hard disk. Duh. Interesting. So okay, fair. Uh, I still, I'm, I'm still going lower though. I'm still gonna go. I'm gonna go based on the name, fifty kilobytes. I almost wanted to say five or six because of the name, but like, that there's no way it's fifty feels... bytes. It's got to be more. You wouldn't buy fifty bytes of storage, I don't think. So I'm gonna go fifty thousand bytes. There is someone out there. Nope. That that was like into tech in the eighties. The that is just cringing. Very mad at us. Somebody right now, knows the answer. And I apologize to you. So sir, Andrew gets the point because he was closest. The correct answer is five megabytes. Five megabytes. Was, uh, I wanted to say one megabyte, but that felt like too much. Yeah. What did you say? Five hundred kilobytes. 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 I said fifty kilobytes. Yeah. yeah. Good for them. <laughs> five megabytes. Good for Seagate, man. The first product. Wow, they took a while to get. I mean, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure they got Wolf. faster. Woof is more all storage. I can say. Yeah, yeah, five megabytes. Wow. All right. Next question. Which of the following is not a 2000s mobile operating system? Wait, Sim you could store two YouTube thumbnails on that storage drive. <laughs> <track. laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and have space for a couple text documents. Yeah, you couldn't edit them because the project file would be too big, but you could store. <laughs> The thumbnail. Okay. I'm sorry I interrupted, but no, that just like dawned on I'm me. I'm always down for a chance to dunk on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that is ridiculous limit. that that is a limit. Wait, okay. what's the score now? The score you got two. And Marquez I got... 15, Andrew 10. Okay, okay, okay. So Andrew is still g getting first dibs <laughs> on know. questions. Okay. Just to be clear. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which of the following is not a 2000s mobile operating system? Good luck. Symbian, Danger OS, or B O S. When you you say two thousand, it's just like at any point in the year, two thousand through two thousand one. I mean two thousand nine. <laughs> two thousand nine. Okay, okay. I still don't know any of them. I just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Danger O S seems very dated. Oh, I'm going to guess Danger O S. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Oh, Marquez, this one's chance to steal. Yeah, that would be BOS is not the real one. Oh, is it BOS? not real or is it not? It's not real at all. No. 
BOS is a real operating system. B like take B that point away. B E O S was an operating system for oh. power PC laptops okay. in the early 2000s. I guess I heard B O S and I just thought of like the B movie for some. Wait, wait, right. it was in the early 2000s. But yeah, Symbian was. I've definitely heard of. Yeah. Wow. Da- what's Danger OS? Danger OS I believe was for the Sidekick. Why would you ever name your own <laughs> OS Danger I OS? Think the company was called. Was it? Wasn't the company who made the sidekick called Danger? Now that I don't know. Imagine in today's age with all this, like with privacy being so important, naming something Danger OS. And then like your mom signing on to you and their phone says Danger as they boot the phone up. Danger Hip Top. Danger the company made the sidekick. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, I'll take the point, but I that's that's a lot of new information for me right there. Yeah, that's the point of trivia. Learn yeah, something new. It was good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the score: Marquez sixteen, Andrew ten. So Andrew gets first dibs on uh, the question. <laughs> this is a hilarious formality. I love it. It's, it's rough to be in the hot seat. <laughs> Andrew. Yes. What year did Bill Gates graduate from college? Hmm. Mm, oh man <laughs> I did watch his documentary okay good start great start wasn't did one of like the it? things that popped out to me uh, it was interesting there's a reason for that Night. oh did he not graduate college is that your final <laughs> answer <laughs> can I get it <laughs> I kind of think <laughs> you gave that one away college. I know <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to help <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, at least it was on purpose. I was doing the math of like, okay, he's about my parents' age, and what year did they? Also, what school did Bill Gates? Wait a second. (laughs) Did he not go to any school? I thought he did go to. He did. Yeah. Stanford. He dropped. I think he dropped out from somewhere. Is it Stanford? I didn't even. The what? (laughs) The thing I will remember from I forget if it was from that or just like is he always met with Warren Buffett? And have you ever seen the video of Warren Buffett eating a cheeseburger or a hamburger when he was uh, eating with Bill Gates? He he opens the burger up at like a diner, dumps salt onto the top of it, flips the burger over, takes the bottom bun off, and then puts more salt. <laughs> it is it is like watching the video. My jaw is just like on the floor. Like, how is this man still alive right now? Oh my but God. I highly He's suggest like preserving trying to find, his insides. Find that video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That burger does not change yeah. in his gullet at all. Incredible. All right, so <laughs> score is 16 Marquez, Andrew 11. Yep. So now we're going to do a smartphone speed round. Smartphone speed round. To close this out. Okay. It sounds like it would be way more fun if Marquez is guessing first. <laughs> <laughs> Marquez can guess first if you want to give oh, him wait, that wait, right. Sorry. Is it speed, speed round? Just what, well, uh, what are the rules for speed so round? So the rules for speed round, I'm glad mm-hmm. you asked. You have 30 seconds to answer as many questions correctly okay. as we give you. Okay. 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 Do you think there are enough questions for us both to get 30 seconds? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll we go have first. five for each of you, and then I could just start picking random questions. So you will get five dedicated smartphone ones. Mm-hmm. And then if you bli- if you fly past those and you get them all correct, I have a, a bunch more okay. that I can choose from. That won't be smartphone related, but I doubt you'll get past okay. the first five, so oh, it's fine. Yes. <laughs> this, I mean, this is hard because as you can tell when I don't know, I just make bad jokes instead, and those take up a lot of time. So, uh, <laughs> so you will get one point if you get the manufacturer correct, two points for the phone. Okay. Shout out to Android Authority for some of the things on this list, by the way, because they made the list. Shout out. And we just took them all. So you ready with the timer? Mm-hmm. Say you first. Yeah, let's Andrew do this. Goes, well, you can choose to let Marquez go first if you want, or you can go first. It's up I'll to you. I'll suffer. Let's go. You'll do it? All right. Three, two, one, go. First smartphone with dual cameras. iPhone 6. Yeah, I knew that one. First front-facing camera phone. iPhone 4. First Marquez phone is so mad with a notch. The uh, essential phone? First smartphone with NFC. Nexus 4. First phone with reverse wireless charging. Oh, okay. I'm also Ooh. going to clarify because I the essential phone, but that was the, the PH1. Yeah, or, okay, yeah. Cool. yeah, you got that one. Okay. Yeah. Marquez, off the top of your head, which ones of those did you know? I think all of them. I think. Ooh, can, can, wait, can we do this? Yeah, yeah. I want to 
Was it, it was. the HTC yeah. Evo yeah. 3D? So was we we had a dual answer here because technically the Evo 3D did have dual cameras. Yeah. We also would have accepted the HTC HTC One M8 because that had the first modern dual camera. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Do but you know which one had the first front facing camera? Was the 4S? No. Oh, it was before the 4S? Uh, we found a Kia Sera phone from 1999 that Whoa. had a front facing <laughs> camera. Oh, yeah. Okay, I wouldn't have gotten that. Okay, Kiosera. so we had a fact, similar this Kia Sera phone can hold not one, not two, but 20 JPEG images. That's nice. a lot of YouTube thumbnails right there. That's a lot. <laughs> That's it's solid. like 10. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. Okay. All right. Did you know? Well, I'll start off the next one with that. So wait, let's let's tally it up. Yeah. So I got one. You got the essential phone and a half, and the um, Nexus phone. So that's three points. You should yeah, not, you got three you should points not total. give me that half credit. Well, I'm you got the phone, honest. so that's two. I got the phone. Yeah, you said the Nexus S, didn't you? Oh no, you said Nexus, Nexus four. four. Nexus yeah. four. Nexus. Oh, never mind. Like, Nexus is one point. <sighs> I'll give. I'll give you a point. I'll give the Nexus. I lose. I'll give a point out of the goodness of the I appreciate it. It has three points. Okay, three points. Yeah. So, at home, if you've been keeping track and you're tied with me, you win. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. There we go. So Marquez, this is kind of like a victory lap because the score right now is 16 14. Right, right, right. <laughs> don't injure yourself on the victory don't, lap. That's uh, don't go backwards. We still got another season, so you don't want to <laughs> like have a career ending injury. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, go. First phone with reverse wireless charging. Oh, that one I don't know. Pass. First phone with Bluetooth. iPhone 3G. Mm. First capacitive touchscreen. iPhone 1. First fingerprint sensor. Fingerprint sensor at all? Yep, on the phone. iPhone 5. Nope. First phone with Qi wireless charging. Jesus. <laughs> that was, that's Galaxy cool. Nexus. I don't know. <laughs> wow. That was a good... That, that was, was a time. good set of questions. Yeah, that was time. All right. Yeah. Nope. So I feel like these are all obscure. These yeah. Are they're tough. a little, and they were more obscure. I had to find like features we actually know and care about to yeah. find these phones. Um, it's funny because in a speed round, I think of like the notable introduction of the feature, which is definitely not the first one. No. Like I think of when the first iPhone got a fingerprint sensor. And I'm like, that was not the first one yeah. with a fingerprint <laughs> sensor, but that's the first one that I remember with a fingerprint sensor. Yep. All right. So, so you didn't get the, any points for that. Hit me with, yeah, <laughs> zero. <laughs> hit me with the real answers. So first phone with reverse wireless charging, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Oh, I think I did a video on that phone. Mm -hmm. First phone with Bluetooth, the Sony Ericsson T36. Was never going to get that. <laughs> first phone with a capacitive touchscreen, the LG Prada. Way back. Huh. Oh, I guess there were a bunch of touchscreens, though. Not resistive. I, what was... The type of touchscreen, the old, do you remember? Was it the BlackBerry Force? It had a resistive touchscreen. Resi is that what it is? Where yeah. it's like a physical button as well? It was and like you had to press hard enough to connect two layers of the physical. The whole screen moved in. Yeah. That was terrible. That was bad. I hated that, that so much. Yeah. It's worth mentioning the LG Prada did come out only a month or two before the first iPhone. It barely beat it to market. Yeah. That was a big last second thing Apple decided to do with the iPhone. It was like, we actually have to do capacitive glass touchscreen with multi-touch. Go. And now we like, just use the Apple Pencil, so it works out. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first fingerprint sensor was the Pantech GL100. I would have been very shocked had hard. you gotten that What one. year was that even? I don't even, I've, I've never heard of Pantech. I got the way easier questions. Have you ever heard of I Pantech? got the only phone that was... Like Modern. that came out when I've uh, since I've been announced here, in 2004 the Pantech GL100. Okay, or GI, I don't know. You know how like sometimes they look similar, GL, GI, yeah, yeah, whatever that was. First phone with Qi wireless charging, Nokia Lumia 920. I feel like you should have gotten that one. That was the first one with Qi wireless charging, apparently. Whoa, I've reviewed that phone too. Yeah, wow. Do you want the last two just for just for fun I do. that we had? I do. Yeah, yeah. Hit us with the. We'll work together for the last two. Okay, yeah, yeah. So first phone with in display fingerprint sensor, Vivo X twenty. It wasn't X twenty one. It was so they made like a sort of a prototypey phone that we checked out, and then it came out in the next version. Uh, okay. So I think it was Vivo X twenty or it was the one we hit with a hammer to test yes, if it would still work. Definitely. Is it X? X20? X20 plus UD technically, but yeah. Okay. That okay. was the one. Yeah. And then first phone with triple cameras. 
Mm. Oh, see, I thought this one was too easy. That's why I saved it. Triple cameras. So we got the dual cameras from the M8 happening. Was it a V30? Ultra wide, LG did ultra wide and primary, but they didn't have a telephoto. They just did ultra wide. So that was dual cameras. The V30 didn't have triple. The V20 V30. didn't. V30. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe it was like a macro the, or some some small, like. It, I don't remember what camera. it was. I feel like I just. <sighs> yeah. I, I bet it is LG. I kind of think it's LG. I bet it is LG. Is it LG? Huawei P20 Pro. Oh, oh yeah, we took yeah, a bunch of pictures of Mac with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. We I remember that the color. Too. I remember the color of it. It was that, that like color was crazy beautiful. green, yeah. like vibrant, had some purple in it and blue. It was really nice. Yeah. That rang right. a lot of bells. That was uh, season one of okay. trivia. Season one. Final score, Marquez 16, Andrew 14. That's We're going to have to get a trophy. That's a, cr- that's a crown. I feel like with this and with Match Cut, we just need to order bulk trophies for the studio <laughs> and start handing them out. Just for useless things. We just like need here, like little just... like soccer trophies that we hand out for uh, like the Dundies. I wouldn't mind a soccer trophy. We should do it. It's not bad. All right. Well, that's been a fun first season of trivia, but the season of Waveform continues and the season of tech is only just getting started, as you probably already could tell. So stick with us. Thanks for listening to this week and we'll catch you guys very soon. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We are partnered with Vox Media and our intro is created by Vane Sill.